Hi, I'm David. I'm here at Hobbycraft in Reading with the very lovely Miss Libby Rose um, here on her pink bus. Um, Libby, hello and welcome to Reading. Um, today you're going to be talking us through um, a make. So do you want to tell us a bit about yourself, what we'll be making and what people will need? Hello, I'm Miss Libby Rose and I um, travel around on the pink sewing bus teaching sewing and visiting hobby craft stores and generally just doing anything related with sewing on the bus. Um, today we're going to be making the summer fun fat quarter skirt with an elastic waistband and an optional applique if you'd like to catch that at the end. So what we would need for that is a, a pack of fat quarters and I've chosen the polka dot fat quarters today um, but there are so many in store and there's <laughs> lovely ones that keep coming out all the time <laughs> that, that I keep getting obsessed with. So, but today I've stuck with the polka dot ones. And obviously you're using fat quarters because obviously they're, they're cut to size already. Yes. But I suppose if you've got a particular material that you love, you could use it by the meter instead. Oh, absolutely. You could just use the pattern and just cut it exactly like I'm doing now. Um, and and just use just use your, your fabric that you've bought by the meter that would be absolutely fine but i just i'm just really into fat quarters because they're fun and it's quite it's quite, quite easy cool. to use yeah, yeah and they're nice it's nice to do a bit of um quirkiness with the different panels as well so yeah but that's just my opinion excellent <laughs> so you're using fat quarters yes. and what else do you need okay so you also need some elastic for the waistband uh i've got the 25 mil uh, non-roll elastic and um, if you get a couple of safety pins, so because um, you'll need those to insert the elastic, and you'll need a sewing machine, an iron, some pins, scissors, and general sewing equipment. And also, if you'd like to apply the applique, then you can get some heat and bond as well. Excellent. And obviously, that is all going to be on the Hobbycraft blog, which is blog.hobbycraft.co.uk and you'll be able to find um, that pattern for that skirt and a, a load of other makes from Libby as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and what, what you'll do is you'll download the pattern as two A4 sheets and then you just join the two A4s together and that creates, that creates the pattern for the panels. So, okay, let's get started. First of all, if you take your um, fat quarter piece and fold it in half. So we fold that in half and then lay the pattern on that fold. So we lay the pattern on, on the fold of the fabric. So lay it up nice and close there. And then you want to pin it on and you're going to cut around the edge here. And you'll do that again four times. Now this, I've, I've done my skirt with four panels and that would, that's great for a child's skirt or if you want it as an adult skirt, say a size eight to 10 for an adult skirt, but you can add more panels um, if, if you'd like to make it, to make it bigger. Um, and it, that would just mean the different size that you would measure for your elastic. So it's really easy to size this up or down. Um, that's what makes it fun. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So um, yes. Yeah, so if you cut around and then fold again, so you've got so you've got your four panels. Brilliant. So you've cut everything out now. Yes. Then I'm just going to use these pieces to show you the next part. So if you take your fat quarter panels and lay them with right sides together, so right sides facing each other. And so that's the bit of the pattern that you want to see when you're wearing it. Sorry, yes, yes. So the good sides, good sides <laughs> together, right sides together, um, <laughs> the outsides <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> um, and so we lay, we lay them together and just one side, pop your pins in, and then go to your machine now and do that first seam. And if you just, when you're stitching, if you pop it in your machine and lay the edge of your um, sewing foot, the edge of the presser foot against the edge of the fabric. And that's just the ordinary foot that comes with the machine, not a specialist foot at all. That's right, absolutely. It's the straight, it's, it's, the, it's the foot that you use for straight stitch and zigzag, just the general, um, general foot that the machine comes with. And you do your backwards and forwards to start as usual. And you'd go all the way to the end and do another backwards and forwards. Then take it out 
And when you open it, you're then ready to attach the next piece. So you advise sewing it all as you go along rather than tacking it all together absolutely, and then Absolutely, absolutely. And it's only from experience because before when I've pinned them all in advance and then I've got pinned ones sitting in my lap, you can get little pin pricks from the <laughs> pins. So I just suggest, you don't have to, but I suggest if you want to avoid getting It's a bit safer, pricks, especially yeah. I suppose if you're making it with, with your children, yeah. you know, yes, definitely safer to do it as you go along. Just do one at a time. Excellent. So one seam, open up, and then you're and then ready to uh, next pop one. the next one. Again, right sides together, good sides facing each other, and go down that line. Excellent. So I'm just showing you that in miniature so that I can so go to... Blue Peter style, here's Absolute one you've made earlier. <laughs> here's, some, here's the seams that I put together earlier, just for ease. So then I've got all four panels uh, And so I up. suppose at this stage, before you, you sew it together, you yes. would check to make sure that it does fit round. Absolutely. So you, you check on yourself or on your um, model. model that you've made it for that you pop it around your waist and see if it, it nicely overlaps each other. You want to give it that nice overlap so that when you attach, uh, when you feed through the elastic, you've got a nice gather. So if you see at this skirt, we've got a nice gather there. So that means that, that it just will pull in with the elastic. So. If I'm going to be happy that four panels are enough <laughs> and I can now sew my last seam in and that turns it into a circle. So I just pop my pins down the edge here and I'm going to... And is there a right way to insert the pins when you're doing this? So ah, yes. Good. I always put my pins... So if I'm going to be sewing along this line, yep. I'll put my pins horizontally to that line. So perpendicular, I think it is. Yeah. So perpendicular to, to this line because when you're sewing along, it's easy to pull those pins out. Um, if you're, and you're not if having you, to fight them whilst you're, you're trying right. to go if along and sew. If you pin it this way and you're sewing along, you hit the pin and it's harder to pull it out. They're here. Lovely. You can sew along and it's easy to just pull them out as you go. It's a great tip. So I'm just going to the edge again the edge of my foot against the edge of the fabric do the backwards and forwards to start and you do that just there to, to lock the stitch in yes like yes like a knot like you would do, if you were hand sewing you'd do a knot then but on the machine we do just that we use the backwards stitch yes yeah, so it locks it in nicely and all the way down and then I've got the full circle of my skirt. Excellent. Ready. And whilst you're taking the pins out there, you've gone quite quickly, but obviously you're quite accomplished at sewing. Yes. Um, <laughs> but you, your advice might be, you know, just take it slowly, take it as, as you're going along, obviously, you know, take the pins out. If you need to stop, stop, um, but you know, keep it as straight as you if can. You press lightly on the, f on the uh, foot pedal. So yeah. um, the lighter you press, the slower that you'll go. And some machines have got a fast and slow option on the machines as well. Some do. Um, so, you know, that, that could be If you're worried about option. going too fast, yes. you can, you can yeah. slow it down. Um, but, but if you just, when you're pressing your foot on the pedal, just press nice and lightly and you won't take off. <laughs> so the next part is to create the channel at the top of the skirt to put the elastic in. So you can refer to your elastic for the width that you'll need up here. So I've got my elastic and I can see that there is ample space there to start creating this channel. Now you might be gathering in slightly as you go around because the pattern we've gone all the way to the top in a sort of in a bit of a uh, slant. Yeah. So when it comes down, you might gather it ever so slightly, but it re to, to make it all fit around. Yeah. But it really doesn't matter because in the end, we're going to have a lovely gather the whole way around. So if you do need to make any little gathers to make it fit, then that's absolutely fine because the elastic will pull it all together after. So don't worry too much about that. And um, you're using quite um, a wide piece of elastic there. Would you suggest that that's the sort of ideal, ideal width to use for this sort of skirt? I think so. I just think it's really nice to have that width um, of elastic. Um, but of course, you could use you could use a, um, a, a thinner 
elastic but i just think it's 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 a nice look mm. and also this is the non non-roll elastic as well so it won't roll uh, over time okay um if you you know if you're sitting down getting up you know and things like that that some elastics do tend to roll okay and the thinner ones too um sometimes might go okay open. thinner elastics i think they're good for other projects but i think a nice waistband thick is is quite what i think so that's my opinion <laughs> so you're just pinning that all the way around just to keep it the the right width there for the channel yes i'll keep going back and checking that I've got, and, and I keep a bit of space either side of the elastic as well, so it just will roll in nicely. And you could, at this point, use your iron to iron it down nice and flat, so you could iron and put pins in, so it makes it nice to sew around. That's another good top tip there. I'll just move that iron slightly. Thank there, you. <laughs> <laughs> so just going around the whole top, creating that channel and you'll just put pins in put as many pins as you like I know I often get asked how many pins are how many pins should I put in but as, as much as you feel confident some um, so for beginners they might want to put in a few more pins just that they know that they're not gonna you know go off, off angle yes yes if you're worried about slipping if you're worried about the um, that bit of gather that will come in um, then then yeah, pop, just pop some more pins in into every um, into in between every panel. Just going along and just double checking it's that you're right nice way. and wide. You want a bit of space either side of the elastic as well, so that it will feed through nicely. Excellent. And um, so, would you say that this pattern is suitable for a beginner or somebody who's who's you know mastered the basic stitches and is looking for something uh, you know a little bit more challenging? Um, it might. Well, I think. It is a little bit next step. So maybe if you've done some simple projects, like made the um, you know, the little zippy purse that we've yeah. done, something like that. So if you if if you're like, okay, I know how to use the machine. What am I ready for next? <laughs> then um, yeah, then I think a nice. It's, it's nice to make a garment. I just think as soon as you can <laughs> get a skirt or a top made, because then you feel like yeah, don't you? you just yeah. <laughs> And I suppose there's sort of minimal measuring involved as well, so yeah, you're not having it. to, you know, put darts in and all of the kind of shaping yeah. which you would do with, yes. with, with yeah, something yeah. So you're not going like tailoring and just <laughs> yeah, blowing your mind, but you're still making a skirt, so you can still say to your mates like, "Oh, I've made a skirt today." They don't have to know that you've just put, um, just cut four <laughs> panels and put some fat quarters together, but it still it gives a lovely effect as well. When you're ready to sew the uh, channel. You want to leave a gap at some point so that we can insert the elastic when mm -hmm. we uh, when we pop the safety pin in and insert it around. So maybe have a think what one might be the panel that will go that you'll generally wear towards the back okay. or something like that. That you know, um, but it doesn't. It's just that you're going to leave that gap and then restitch over it. So you might want to. Um, yeah, you might just. So you wouldn't it. want so it, it on the front. Little, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not going to make. And that then um, a question yes. I didn't ask. So yeah. the length of elastic you've got, have you had? Do you measure that up? Do you know how? Do you know how much That's to it. use? Yeah. So um, you check it before we go to insert it. What yeah. you do is you go to your um, you go to your model and you would just go round the waist where the dress is, where the skirt is going to sit. You pull it so it gives it a bit. Um, but not uh, too tight that it's uncomfortable. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So you think. Okay. So that's nice and nice and simple though. Yes. So you don't actually have to, you know, get your measuring tape out at all, really. No. You could. You could get measuring and then measure it on there, but you may as well just put it straight around. Now, this. If you've used different colours like I have, um, instead of changing the colours for each for for each piece, what I've done is just what I did in the sample is I just used just a, a colour. But then I put it on a fancy stitch, so then it actually looked quite decorative the whole way around. So I'm just going to put it on a zigzag stitch. It depends how many stitches your machine have. Some have just got a few different variations of zigzag. Some have got all sorts. I think yeah, some machines really but a zigzag different. will look nice. Yeah, I think so. A nice zigzag going around or some sort of decorative. So you want to go round. If you, if you think that you might forget, um, use some tailor's chalk or something to remember to leave a gap. If you leave it maybe about the size of three fingers, just mm -hmm. so that you can push your elastic through. And if you can put the edge of the foot against the edge of the channel and stitch the whole way around. 
Okie dokie, so is that all tacked up now? I've, yep, all pinned so up, I've, I should say. It's okay. <laughs> um, I've pinned it all together in place. And I know that there will be a bit of gathering just to try and make it fit into each other so that, that, so that these panels will all fit in. So I know that that will... So you just pull it to make it fit in. But it's fine if there is any gather because okay. you won't see it later. I'm just going to zip round. So when you're sewing this bit down, yes. you're sewing effectively on the inside of the skirt. Yes, so that you can watch that the edge of the channel line. So you can that's keep it what, at the same yeah, length all the way around. Uh, yes, and that will keep it nice and nice in a straight line as well because you've pinned all of that in place. So I'm going to change it to my zigzag. Do still doing backwards and forwards. Just at the start to to keep it secure. Yes. And then when I need to keep the gather in, I do that now. And I just keep going around and keeping all of that in to make the waistband at the top. And again, you, will, you may well want to go a bit slower than I'm going, but I'm trying to get this done for quickness You're on, you're on a schedule well. today. <laughs> <laughs> But I suppose as well, because this is a, a panelled skirt, you know, you could do a panel at a time and, yes. you know, just take yourself nice, and, nice yes. and steady there. And so you're happy with the gathering parts as well that are coming into play here too. So I'm just going to keep going until I reach that end point where I'm going to leave my gap so where I started I'm not going to go right up to that point I'm just going to leave a gap and I would say about three of my three of my fingers is quite good so that I know that I can push the elastic through so I'm almost at that point now and I do a little bit of backwards and I come out take any pins out and then I am going to so how long mm -hmm. would this would this project take you know somebody who was who was sort of new to sewing but as you said had mastered kind of the basic stitches would you expect this to be you know a few hours um, a day no I would say I'd say um, a, yeah a few a few hours definitely um, you yes yeah, but absolutely. I suppose you know they could always cut the panels out one day um, and then go that's back to right. it the next day. That's right. It's just once your once your panels are all cut out and things, that's when, yes, the fun starts. The, the fun, fun starts. So I put my safety pin into the end of the elastic, and you might want to as well pop the other side. So if you pop the elastic, just to hold it in place, so that doesn't okay, disappear so it doesn't back disappear into, into the, the skirt. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. You'll be making this skirt. I know. No I'm time. actually, I'm thinking I've got lots of nieces and this could be their Christmas present. Excellent. <laughs> I think you're picking it up really well. Okay, so I've got that held on there. So now, and this is always hard to teach. When I try and teach kids this, it's always hard to just push it through. And they're like, mm -mm. <laughs> I'm like, uh, push. <laughs> so you're just threading it. And because you've got that safety pin in there, you can feel, feel something. It. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes you could um, use something. I've used chopsticks and things before to, to push through, yeah. <laughs> anything, <laughs> you, anything. You look around the kitchen, there's little things with books on the end of it or something. You <laughs> there's, some, there's some people here in the audience <laughs> nodding along. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this is a bit of a so this is this bit, is probably the, the the most difficult bit actually. Yes, think, it is. The, the looks of it. It's just pushing elastic through, but it is it is quite. It's just a little bit time consuming. But once it's pulled through, I'll have both pieces out to meet me in my section. Is the orange section, so I know I'm getting closer now. <laughs> <laughs> and then in terms of, um, you know, somebody starting out sewing, they mm -hmm. wanted to buy a machine, you know, obviously, y I, I suppose you wouldn't suggest they start out at, you know, an all singing or dancing machine. Well, I think it would all depend on your ambition, on what okay. you were thinking. I would, I really do suggest doing a little class or a little taster 
and that's not just saying because I do, <laughs> I teach them. <laughs> but you know, any anywhere, if you can get along to a little demo or along to something first to try out a machine, I I really would because then you can start to get a feel of um of of what of what you might quite like mm. doing. I I know. I mean, I've been there before where you you have all of the these lovely thoughts, and then you um. And then actually, when you start doing it, you think, oh, I don't even want to be doing that. So you could think that you're, you're wanting to do all these lovely interiors. But then when you start to learn piping and things, <laughs> actually, I much prefer not to be doing that anymore. So, it's, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a good idea to um, get uh, to do, do some little trials first on machines or just, um, yeah, just to give yourself a bit of a... Uh, um, a bit of a, a test to see how you feel because they're yeah. such personal things machines are really are personal definitely um, i mean at hobbycraft obviously you can pop into any store and um and our colleagues will be able to help you choose a machine and get started with um our so simple driving tests so i mean we've worked with libby on those as well so libby's helped us create those so you you do go from you know learning your basic stitches through to creating that zipped coin purse you talked about which i've got to say when libby mentioned that um originally I had visions of us, you know, really panicking about trying to insert a zip. But actually, it's, you know, the way you teach it, it is really straightforward. <laughs> so um, Libby yeah. did some videos for us um, previously. So they are all on our YouTube channel. So if you want to go and have a look at those and get a kind of idea of, of where to get started with sewing, um, you know, those are fantastic. Um, and as we mentioned, um, this project, along with many others, others are on the blog at blog.hobbycraft.co.uk. Is that giving you enough time there? Yes, lovely. <laughs> so now I've pulled the elastic through and I've, I've met each other. Then all I was doing then was just feeling around that I haven't twisted. And it can happen. The most careful of, of threading, it can sometimes, it can twist. So just making sure that, that you haven't had a twist in there at all. And then I put these two pieces nice and flat, overlapping each other. And I'm going to do a zigzag backwards and forwards and that will just ping back into that hole, okay? So it's just, I'm gonna do a few zigzags backwards and forwards because that really holds it on tight so the elastic won't come loose inside the waistband. So just backwards and forwards as many times as you like. And then I know that that's going to hold in nicely. You'll cut your threads better than me. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm pulling it all into place. And then this, where you've left your hole, you'll want to go back over and join those two bits up. Sorry, my threads. I'm doing this very quickly. So <laughs> <laughs> I do have loose threads around. So you want to join those two bits of zigzags up. And once they're joined... But what, I, I suppose when you're joining those up, you don't want to obviously trap the elastic in that. You want the elastic to be free. Yes. So that's why we left a little bit of gap as well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it wasn't tight up to the elastic. So you push that elastic as far away as you can. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Pop a pin in there to hold it away. So then you can just stitch across to join that bit of elastic up. Now you've got the main part of your skirt done. So if you didn't want to add applique at this stage, the last thing that you would do is just pop a little hem. Now, if you didn't, if you were like, okay, that's enough sewing for today. <laughs> I just want to be able to wear this skirt. What you could do is pinking sheer the whole bottom. And yeah. that would actually look quite cute as well, especially for a child's skirt. So you could go around with the pinking shears or the zigzag type of scissors that yep. you can get. And that will stop any fraying and it might look quite cool along the bottom as well. So you could just pinking shear, zigzag the whole bottom. Or if you want to do a lovely finish, you would go... So sort sort of like, I suppose, the, the similar to the channel at the top, but a much smaller yeah, overlap. Yeah, absolutely. You go fold it once and fold it once again, about one centimeter and then one centimeter again. You could pop your iron as well to iron that nice and flat. Now I'd 
I suggest doing it this way. So you're folding it up and the raw edge is really tucked away inside. So it can't fray. Yes. But also, because this is a skirt that will stick out, when it flips up, you, the hem still looks nice if, mm. if you're sort of, you know, if, if it's because it's a fun sort of skirt that flows out, then you don't see any raw edges at all along the bottom. And again, you've just used a decorative stitch on that one. I have, yeah. I use the same on this one. I use the same decorative that I used at the top. And I think I'd do that here again. I'd put a zigzag along the bottom as well, just so that it matches in nicely. So that, this part here, is now that you can just get really tedious so really take your time with that because if, if you want to do it just do it do it nicely keep going along one centimeter and then one centimeter again the whole way excellent and then you just will sew along there if you if you iron it flat as well you can sew along and just watch the edge of the foot against the edge of the fabric the whole way along the bottom and yeah, you could do that in your decorative um, stitch as well. And, or just pink and shear it. Okay. Because that's quite fun too. And you mentioned about this um, applique yes. um, patch. So yes. if you wanted to put on one of those. Okay. So then once hem's done and everything and you're happy, and you could even, you could even do this at a later stage to jazz up your skirt. So I've got, I've got a heart. So I've cut out a heart with a bit of embroidery on it. So you've done and that actually yourself, haven't you? Using yeah. uh, an awesome in or dancing machine. But I have, you could, yes, you could yes, buy you know, a ready-made patch or yes. you know, create your yes, own without yes, a motif. You can, yes, you can get you can get the little patches, or um, you could get um, you know cut out. I've I've done bunny rabbits, um, all sort any sort of shape that that might you know that, that you like really. So, um, but hearts are quite a good one. The reason why I like hearts is because. You can fold it ah. in half. So you fold your fabric in half and all you need to do is get that one side correct and when you open it, you've got a nice heart. Genius. The same on both <laughs> sides. And also, when you're sewing around around a heart, you um, it's good for practicing because you're doing straight curves. You can go, when you get to the top bit here, you put your needle in to the machine and all the way into the fabric turn and around so you're practicing your curves and you're practicing your straight as well if you just to to, uh, to um apply it onto the skirt if you just follow the instructions on the heat and bond so you cut out this is what this is it's a heat and bond you cut it out you pop it on to the back of the applique first and then I'd iron that on. But make sure you get it the right way round. Yes. Because um, I have seen this before. <laughs> Not Libby, yes. I will point out. Um, but yes, I have seen it before <laughs> where the iron has gone down onto the heat and bond yeah, not on so the good. adhesive side. And um, yes, okay. many an iron, so I'm sure. Sh <laughs> shiny bit that does, it doesn't, it doesn't feel sticky as such, but it's sort of, you can just sense that that's your, that's your side. That's I suppose if you're worried as well, you can always use a tea towel. Yes, in between again just top, just yes, to make yeah. sure but then this side is just paper so i'm going to pop that down yes and to to be 100 percent sure just use a bit of scrap fabric or a tea towel or something and put it on top of there again now if i put that nice and hot onto here then i'm excited when, when i <laughs> Okay, when I pull the paper off, I've then got this shiny. So then the adhesive side That's has right. now stuck down. Yeah, so as long as it looks shiny. On then, the fabric. Yeah, so it looks, sorry, as long as it looks shiny on the fabric, the paper is fine. That's going to get discarded or just use these papers as your templates for future ones. I'm just going to add a bit more heat on there because I can see some bits sticking down. I'm ever so worried about this iron. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see it nice and shiny. Not sure if you can see how shiny that is. But that's nice and shiny. It, I know that there is a lots of lovely stick on there. And then, then again, so although you've um you've put that through, that's already that's not sticky yet, is it? On no, that so side. it's not 
it's not sticky. It needs to be heated again to apply it to here. So I can't just put it there and it's, it's done. I'm going to now work out the position that I would put it onto the skirt. Pop it nice and flat. Maybe at a jaunty angle. However, Love a jaunty angle. Yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, at uh, this one, you would put a piece of fabric or a tea towel on top. Definitely for this one, because if there's any bits of glue hanging over the edge, no matter how good your cutting is, there always seems to be a tiny bit of glue <laughs> hanging off the edge, and then that will and that will make it curl up, and and it'll stick to the iron, and it's not so good. So if you use a scrap bit of fabric or a tea towel or I can't think of anything else right now to suggest <laughs> a scrap of fabric or a tea towel and again I apply my heat all of these instructions are on the back of the heat and bond as well so don't worry you don't have to um, remember everything that I'm saying for this part because it does they are good instructions on there because I think my first thought with this was that you would have had to have uh, you know sewn this on but actually the heat and bond just makes it much easier doesn't it because then when you go around to do your finishing stitching yep. it's in place you know it's not going to move it's not going to fall off yeah these cut the heat and bond come in different um uh, different weights as well so some they are that you don't need to um stitch around as well so okay. they, they actually say that these ones don't need stitching but I quite like it I like a bit of stitching around my applique and also the reason why I, I like using um, that I like using these for applique and the reason why we, we do it is because if we had just pinned this fabric on here you you would guarantee that at some point you'd bunch it up okay and then you'd get a lump in your stitching around the outside so if you can see on this one that I did earlier I've I've stitched the whole way around the edge and it's sitting nice and flat. So that's held on. It also, the, the heat and bond gives it a bit of um, strength behind it as well. So you've ironed so it So would that be safe to wash as well? Yes, now you can, well, yes, yes. Oh, so that's great. And then, and you can just stitch around in a decorative stitch around the edge. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Libby. Um, my pleasure. Your, your very first kind of uh, on-air experience from us. But um, as Libby's mentioned, all of the projects are on the blog at blog.hobbycraft.co.uk. Um, and you can also book on to Libby's sessions across the country um, yes. at... Um, the... It's on... Oh, on the... It's on the MissLibbyRose.com, uh, and then if you just you just see Hobbycraft store visits, or you can do Miss Libby, you can just type that all in slash Hobbycraft store visits, and there's a big calendar with all the different places that I'm going to. Brilliant. Yes. Thank you all very much.